My name is Rachel Salas. I'm a sleep neurologist, um, board certified in both specialties. I uh, finished my sleep medicine training at Johns Hopkins in 2008, and since that time I've been faculty there. So circadian rhythm disorder um, is actually a category of several type of sleep disorders that is caused by um, our internal clock, our internal biological clock being off. So each one of us has an internal clock, and for the typical average person, um, most, most of us have our clock set to go to bed at 11 p.m. and wake up at 7. Of course, there's people that kind of deviate from that. Um, when that clock, that internal clock, becomes misaligned with our social clock, you know, our work schedule, or you know a social schedule, um, you know that can potentially initiate um, a sleep disorder. Um, there are things called advanced sleep, uh, advanced sleep phase syndrome, and delayed sleep phase syndrome. Um, we've all experienced jet lag, which is actually a sleep disorder um, in itself, and people can really suffer from that uh, chronically at times, especially if they do a lot of travel. So it's essentially a group of uh, sleep disorders, you know, that, that where the biological clock is not aligned with the social clock in a sense. Uh, it, it runs the gamut, you know, we, we definitely see those uh, college students that recently graduated who are now out in the workforce. So, you know, these are typically the night owls that were, you know, back when they were in high school, um, their clock was kind of already had that tendency to go to bed, you know, a little later. They went to college, parents weren't around, their, their internal clock got actually pushed back, you know, so now their bedtime is set, you know, somewhere at 3, 4 a.m. What happens is they graduate and now their employers are saying, hey, come in at seven or six, um, they don't have the luxury of, you know, moving their schedule around, you know, taking evening classes or whatnot. So, so now their, their internal clock still set at going to bed at three or four, but you know, they're waking up, they're having to wake up earlier. So now they're sleep deprived and, and they really have a, a pretty dramatic circadian rhythm um, disorder. And then again, we see it um, in uh, the older population, especially people with dementias and other neurological disorders, very common. Um, and actually, we see quite a bit of these. So circadian rhythm disorders, are, you know, very similar to insomnia, and actually, you know, a lot of the patients with circadian rhythm disorders report insomnia. It's a clinical diagnosis. Um, a lot of times, we we um, you know can easily make the diagnosis. Uh, patients can. Um, bring in uh, sleep logs that they might have maintained before seeing us in clinic where it's kind of tracking their bedtime and awakening time and these patients will clearly you know be going to bed you know um, at you know at, at very inconsistent sleep uh, bedtimes and, and then inconsistent wake times and that's what we call an irregular sleep wake cycle um, so it they have to have um, either a delay in their sleep onset uh, for the delayed sleep phase syndrome or an irregular bedtime and awakening time. So if they have one of those categories, depending on which one we're talking about, in combination with some daytime consequence, then we can make that dis you know, diagnosis. So for the circadian rhythm disorders, um, you know, a, a lot of times it's just um, making the patient aware that you know that you you can't maintain. Some people are very sensitive to to not having a consistent sleep wake cycle. Um, so part of it is definitely education. I like to always bring in my uh, colleagues of sleep behavioral psychologists because they can incorporate cognitive behavioral therapy, which again works really well for these patients. Um, medications sometimes come into play. Um, we may use things like melatonin, um, not necessarily as a hypnotics or a sleep medication, but um, more as a signal for the brain to let them know, hey, bedtime should be coming pretty soon. Um, we sometimes use light therapy where we can, you know, uh, have the patient turn on, you know, a, a light box in the morning for a specific time. Um, and that can help reset their clock and, and move them depending on what their sleep disorder is. Um, so those are probably the first uh, treatment strategies we use in combination. 